Hello everyone. I'm trying a new system, so just want to make sure everything's still working out. Hello everyone. I'm trying a new system, so cool. Looks like it is. Just checking out on my phone. Awesome. I can't see if who's joined or not, if there are people joined. This probably shows somewhere on here. But welcome. Welcome the one and all. I was everyone on this Friday night on the East Coast, and uh, you know, almost most people had to work on the on the West Coast. So, give it a few minutes. Let some people join. See how it goes. Wish I could tell. Here it is. A few numbers. Okay. For the one that's in here, for anyone who's in here, if you could just let me know if you could hear me okay, so I know that everything's good. Uh -oh. So I got some notes down here, sorry, look away from the screen real quick. Um, what's going on? Alrighty, cool. People can hear me. Great. We have someone in here. So if we got one person in here, I'm going to start talking. I'm not going to wait for <laughs> everyone, but, uh, quick reminder, uh, if you happen to be looking to book some Hyatt hotels, there are going to be the category changes happening on the 26th. So if you most more hotels are going up than going down. So if you are looking to book it, book it before it goes up because then you are locked in at that lower price point. If it goes down, they're supposed to give you back the points. Um, so you don't have to wait until the, the hotel goes down. If you want to book the hotel now, just book it now. And then you're already going to be able to get the points given back to you if the uh, points go down. So that's the nice thing about Hyatt. Not only do they give you a warning, but for the hotels that are going to be changing price for a lower price point, they are going to be dropping down to, or they are just going to be reimbursing you back the points. So that's pretty nice. Um, so as I said, I am trying out this like different system that I got going on over here. Might be a few hiccups, but just trying to get a little bit uh, comfortable with it. Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, oh, wait a few things. Let's. So a few things I want to talk about in here was going to be things like lounge access. I want to talk about um, becoming a member on this channel. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know, things like uh, uh, foreign currency. <laughs> How much foreign currency do people bring with them? Um, one question that I had someone message me on Instagram asking me about uh, lounge access and asking me about which card they should get for lounge access. And they had the Chase Sapphire Preferred. They racked up points with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And I was telling them, okay, well, if you want the best options for lounges, get yourself the American Express Platinum card. Um, and they go, okay, well, I was thinking the Sapphire Reserve is already at Chase. They want to just bump it up. So I go, okay, if that's the card you already know you want to get. But the thing I found interesting was that this person didn't want the lounge access for their own home airport. They wanted it for when they're at other airports and they're connecting, which I completely understand because I have had some connecting flights where it's very, very useful and I'm thankful to be able to have that. But I also like having it at my home airport, which is uh, which is nice. You got a question, Randall? What's going on? Ask that question. Um, yeah, because I find it like for my home airport – I have the ability, one, to save money on a meal. I have the ability to, if I want to show up early, I can. If I don't want to show up, if I want to show up later with something like the Platinum card, I can use clear TSA pre-check and skip through everything. So um, I like having that ability. Uh, and But I guess before I, I got the Platinum card, I used to just show up the airport later because that was kind of what I just didn't want to have to sit around in the airport. 
Um, let's see. I can use the green card lounge buddy at Centurion Lounge for a plus one. No, I'm pretty sure the only way you can get into the Centurion Lounge um, is for you can only get into the Centurion Lounge with the American Says Platinum or the American Says Black card. Um, I know that they were kind of saying that they should allow like people with the green card to maybe get like one pass to be able to get in um because then they can maybe like entice them to want to get the other card but uh no yeah from what i'm aware of i don't believe that's a i've never heard anyone saying that was a possibility um i think there's a list of different things with the lounge buddy that you'll be able to see that you get and you it shows how much money ends up costing uh with the with like if you decide to use your green card and how much like you'll get towards it so you can be able to see the the value or how many pretty much like how many times you could go depending on which lounges you want to go to because not all lounges are the same price point they're all a little bit different what's going on lynn how you doing man um so yeah but that's interesting i am curious of how people with your lounge access are you looking because like one of the things for me is that because i have the centurion lounge at my home airport is one of the reasons why i want the platinum card if i didn't when i still want the platinum card there's a decent chance but because I have the ability to get it at my home airport, it makes a big difference because then every time I fly out of LAX, if I don't happen to be flying internationally with business and first class, then I get to use the Centurion Lounge. So I'm always going to pretty much have lounge access when I'm flying out. So sometimes I'm flying with United. I won't do it because it's like a 25-minute walk, and I just don't feel like having to get there, going to the international section, and then walk all the way to the United section. It just me it's 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 more of a pain um so because of that sometimes when i'm flying with many of the cases when i'm flying with united i just i'm just like forget it i'll show up later but um but for the other ones i'm flying with american it's just it's a quick little five minute walk from from tom bradley international um all righty so we did have a few questions i had on the uh i had both on the oh I guess, I don't know if that's me. For some reason, the thumbs came up. I don't know if it's me doing a thumb or if you could hit that like button. Maybe that's what it's saying. Um, but yeah, so as I said, it's a new program. I don't quite know exactly all the ins and outs of it, but I'm going to do my best to try to understand it. So, um, but yeah, I had on the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, check out the Cheap Travel Knowledge Facebook group. I probably could figure out how to, uh, I should drop that in the description box somewhere in here. Um, but yes, Cheap Travel Knowledge Facebook group should be on one of the on one of my community tab things, and I should put it in here as well. Got to be able to get myself a link to that. Um, where currently it's just been mostly me been writing in a lot of stuff, but I would love it if other people would write in their wins, write in other questions that they have, different things like that. But um, some people wrote in questions on the Facebook group. Some people wrote in questions on the community page. So I'm just going to go through some of the questions. Here is one that was from um, Cesar. He was asking, uh, do you plan to add a cashback strategy to your setup? So earlier in this year, I think it was early, maybe it was the end of last year, I did come out with a video where I was talking about cards that I wanted to add. And I did have a few of them that were cashback cards. Um, I haven't added any of them yet. I, I don't see myself as doing uh, getting cashback cards to consistently rack up cash back but i could see myself essentially just getting a cash back card for a sign up bonus um because of the fact of things that i said i believe in that video where it's like stuff that adds up that you won't see within the travel ends up being things like uh like uber like uber taxis um if you can figure like when you are in these international destinations when you can be able to use um the public transportation it can end up being great but a lot of times I end up getting confused. Like I was just in Australia. It wasn't hard there. Um, but uh, but in many instances, especially like when you first get into the destination, a lot of the times I'm just like, just get me to the hotel and I can figure things out from there. I just want to get my bags down, relax, not think about, you know, trying to figure out how to, because that's kind of what happened with me in Korea. And I was just like, you know what, I'll pay for the taxi it's fine. And then I can maybe figure out the public transportation as I'm in the city later on, but just at least first get me to the hotel. Um, but that just getting to the hotel is cash. That's stuff that's going to cost you money. And for anyone who watched Luke points and miles, uh, 
live stream. He was, I asked him a question about how much do you spend when you're on trips? And he says he doesn't really calculate it. And the way he thinks about it is, is that he's going to be spending money regardless when he's at home. And I think of it like the same way. Like when it comes to food, I'm going to be spending money on food. When it comes to going out, I don't go out very often, but when I do, I'm going to spend some money. And it's the same thing like when I travel. So if I happen to be dining out, I mean, I'm not going to be eating crazy nice restaurants all the time, but I'm going to go get myself. I mean, I don't know what I get myself, a Vegemite sandwich, which is horrible for anyone who wants to know. Um, when I was in Australia, yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm not going to get everything from the grocery store and make all that. When I'm traveling to a new place, I want to try out some, some, uh, you know, new different, um, cuisines or new different things from that city. So, uh, that's something definitely that I, I, I don't think too much of it costing, uh, a high amount when it comes to like food, but when it comes to things like taking ride shares, taking taxis, these are all things that I do on occasion here in the U S um, I mean, if I go out with friends, then I will do that, so I don't have to, to drive, but it can end up adding up overseas, so that's one of the reasons why I would like to get at least some type of cash back, and if it's not that, the Aeroplan card would end up being a nice one to be able to get yourself the 1.25 back on not just um, uh, like travel through a portal, but just travel in general, so I, I don't see myself having a cash back strategy set up, but I could see myself, and there's a I'd say a decent possibility I might end up getting at least one card that's going to have like a, you know, $500 maybe sign up bonus that I can end up getting and then use that towards getting uh, some cash back. I have done some different like bank bonuses before. I don't go on it like really hard because it's, it's a lot of different stuff with taxes. And then there's, I don't know, there's a lot of all these different things that kind of come with it and rules and I've messed it up. Um, so uh, not really messed it up, but I just have, there's been things with like direct deposits and it just has taken a process. I guess once you end up in the hang of it, it ends up being um, better and more lucrative. If you look at something like RJ Financials, he's really good at it. But um, that's something that I could also see myself maybe doing with the with the bank bonuses. I've done, done a few of those. I just don't go hard with it. But um, cash back set up just consistently. No, because if I really, really wanted to, I could just use my points and cash it out. But I just find the value way more in using these points to do things that I'm not going to be doing with cash. I, you know, I flew over to Fiji, excuse me, Fiji and um, over to Australia and then from Australia over to L.A. And I did all this in business class. And this would have been like round trip. And this isn't being like selective. This would have been like if I paid for it round trip, somewhere near like eight, nine thousand dollars just getting there and back from the location. And I met people who were there who were like there for work and things like that, who were talking about how they, you know, uh, they were there for work, but they still were in like economy. I was like, man, if I had to travel here for work for 15 hours, you guys couldn't hook someone up at least like a premium economy <laughs> or something like that. But uh, yeah. So for me, when it comes down to the points, I understand there are the groups of people who just want to not have to spend any money. Um, but then what ends up happening, I guess if you have like the families, look at something like Dugras, I can understand like, uh, you know, from his perspective more, if you have the, a lot of different people, you're trying to make it all work out and it's just so much that you have to kind of put together. But as someone who's traveling mainly by himself, um, I get to the point where it's like, I could do it that way, but then I won't, I guess I just wouldn't have as many of the cool experiences. I don't know. That's, that's just how I look at it. I would rather uh, get the points and just use it on awesome experiences instead. Okay. Let's see. Lynn said here, uh, going to Japan again in May, this time in first, let's go. Yeah. I think I remember you, you writing that on I don't know, one of my videos, I believe I can't remember if it was a comment or a video. That's awesome. Fantastic. Uh, can't wait. Uh, by the way, what lounges can I access with first class? I'm flying out of Chicago. So if I remember correctly, I think you said you're flying JAL. So if you're flying Japan Airlines, I don't know which one you would get from there. So if you were flying on a and you could do the Polaris Lounge. Um, I'd have to look that up to see which one. You'd have to check out whatever One World Partner is out there. Um, I, I know Chicago isn't the greatest when it comes to lounges. So uh, hopefully there is a, a decent option, but I, I don't know 100% 
um, which what, 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 what one you would have out there. You'd have to check to see what uh, what One World partners are uh, out of O'Hare. What's going on, Chad? Welcome to the live. Filmo, welcome, welcome. Uh, yes, so Filmo. Um, Filmo was actually someone who, if I'm remembering, yes, it was definitely Filmo. He won one of the giveaways that I have for people who have been joining the different groups that I have. Um, he won for just writing a story in, um, on the Cheap Travel Knowledge community page. Um, now I'm giving a giveaway for someone who, who joins the, uh, who joins the, my, becomes a member of the JP Knowledge YouTube channel. It is $5 a month to become a member. Um, but one of my members and currently I only have one. So I have one person who signed up as a member. So right now, if you're the only person who's there, you're going to win the prize. But, um, but if you become a member, you have the ability to win this prize. The last time I gave, uh, I'm, I'm still going to be doing like another, um, um a guest of honor so if someone would like a guest of honor as a if you want to have the opportunity of doing that and you also want to help support the channel please become a cheap travel knowledge uh team member right here on the youtube um uh channel i would be very grateful for that and i will be doing different things with my channel i am going to be looking at also adding in like um assisted bookings part of the channel so what i would do for members is i'm going to have member videos where people can write in, let me know something that they would want to try to have help with when it comes to bookings. And then I will end up doing videos just showing how I would go about it. Now, the reason why I would not just like do it right for you is because in many cases, you're going to start searching and you might not find the best thing that you would want, but you can have an understanding of what things to look for if you happen to be searching for something. So if you happen to be searching to go, um, you know, over to Frankfurt from New York, you might go, okay, cool. What are the options out there? You could fly on Lufthansa. You could fly um, Singapore Airlines. Are you going to use Singapore Airlines? You're going to use Singapore Miles. You're going to look for a bonus and then actually take advantage of something like Air Canada. So there's all these different options and things you can look at. So um, that's something that I'm going to have for my members. And I'm hopefully going to have people who, who are the members going to have questions about how to search for things. And then from people who are the members within my group, what I'll end up doing is I will do these walkthrough bookings of how I would go about finding it. And hopefully it ends up being really helpful and gives people the idea of what to look for. I've been doing this for people through some of my um, assisted bookings um, when it comes to like the consultations, because um, not as many people want to go just full on me telling them when to book it. Um, although that is I think for some people a lot easier. It still also takes a lot of my time. So because of that, I do require, um, uh, I guess, a, a reasonable amount for my time. Um, so, but what I have done with people is I said, listen, we could do a consultation. And during the consultation, I can just walk you through a assisted booking and you can see what I would do. And for some people, I've literally found the exact thing that they were looking for. So I'm like, okay, cool. We can do this. Hey, this is what I would do. Does this seem good? And they go, sure. And they end up doing that booking. So it can be a way to, you know, save money. If you anyone wants to do a consultation, you can hit me up. Um, there has been some issues going on my website. I can't figure out exactly what's going on with the GoDaddy email. I apologize for anyone who has maybe tried to contact me and there's been some issues there. But um, but if you become a member, we can also do some of the assisted bookings that I'll make as videos for my members to kind of walk you through it and help you for anyone who feels uneasy about how to make these bookings. I know that there's a lot of people who like earning all the points. And then when they look at trying to make the bookings, they get scared that they made a mistake or an error. And here's the thing is if you make some errors and you're not getting the fullest value in the beginning, it's fine. What you want to do is just at least start dipping your toe into it, start having ideas. And then once you start getting these ideas about how to go about it, then you'll start becoming better and better. So yes, you may make a booking that was 80,000 points when it could have only been 65,000. Sure, but at least now you've learned that the 65,000 exist. So now even though you 15,000 points over the course of a lifetime of getting points, you're not even going to think about. Um, I'm not saying you don't want those points, but I'm saying that it's better to be able to at least do the things, make the errors, learn from your mistakes, and then move forward from there. So um, I'm hoping that with this channel, I'm going to get more people who are going to be making bookings. I know people love to earn the points. I love to earn the points too, but trust me, going on these trips, meeting these people, going like meeting people in different locations, um, learning about different cultures, 
all these different things ends up being, in my opinion, way more fun than just earning the points. Uh, let's see. So we got some people here. Uh, Juan, what's going on, Juan? From Miami. Okay. Hello, MK. Here's some cash back. Uh, Philmo says he has some cash back. Pretty good setup, but loves transferable currencies. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's see. Juan says he has cash back, custom cash. We prefer transferable currencies. Uh, Chase for Hyatt and built for bonus transfers to airlines. Yes, built has been great with that. Although I got it. I mean, we'll see. Something tells me that like, I don't know if that's sustainable for built to be doing those type of bonuses all the time. Cause I see that on, I'm like, this is just incredible. I would want built points over everything. Um, but, uh, but then I'm like, eh, we'll see how this keeps on going. You know, we'll see if, if they, I listen, if they keep giving 75, 100, 125, 150% transfer bonuses, you're just going to want built points. Even if you earn less with built points, you're going to get in a ridiculous return on when it comes to the transfer bonuses. So it's almost like you're earning double every single time. Um, so let's see. Yes. Filmo says he was the, the winner. Yes. So if you want to, if you want to get yourself a guest of honor uh, certificate into your World of Hyatt account, the way you'd be able to win that for this giveaway would be to become a member of this channel. Um, I should, the, me not being completely prepared. The way you would do that is you'd go on this channel, you click on become a member. There is a link. I set it up on the YouTube community page and also um, I set it up on the Facebook group as well. So, um, but yes, if you want the chance to win, as I said, there's only one member right now. Currently, that person is winning. So, if anyone else wants the opportunity, I'm gonna raffle it out and figure out who ends up being the next person to win. Um, Cesar, what's going on? Um, what non chase uh, built benefits? Wait, what non chase built benefit a chase Hyatt setup? I don't quite understand that question, MK. Oh, sorry. What non-Chase built card benefit a Chase Hyatt setup? Uh, which cards? I guess um, I don't. Um, well, I guess it depends on what you're trying to do. So what I do with my Chase points, not 100% because I have um, I had this. Sorry. I have uh, used my chase points for flights, so I'm not going to say I do it 100% with Hyatt, but most of my chase points go to Hyatt, and then I end up grabbing points from my other transferable currencies and I use them all to flights. So I would say if you happen to have, if you're looking for non-chase cards, um, if you want to rack up a lot of points, you go with American Express, and then you just use those for flights. You just try to figure out first if you want to do things with um, domestically, just do the basic ones of learning how to use like British Airways with to fly American Airlines, use something like either Virgin Atlantic, which kind of devalued the, the thing with Delta or flying blue to, to fly with Delta. And then Air Canada can be a reasonable option to do with uh, United or if you can find it with Turkish, even though for me, that's too much of a, it's kind of a headache. So I don't, I don't like it as much, but, um, but uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to check out some more of these questions that I had from earlier. So this is from – I forget who asked this. I apologize. I don't have the names listed on here. Uh, while traveling outside the U.S., are there any cards with better multipliers than the City Premier? The City Premier is a – pretty darn good card. I'm trying to think of what card I would like outside of the U.S. that's better than that. Um, no, no, if I'm thinking about just covering so many different categories, it just hits so many spots. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could maybe say something like the Capital One Saver One card, maybe. Um, if you wanted, yeah. Saver one, maybe the Venture X, just something if you want to just be able to catch so many different things. That's like the only things that maybe I can think of. But even still, I think that there's prob probably decent probability that you're going to earn more points with something like the City Premier card. It really is a, a really good card. Uh, it just, it seems like City's going to be trying to do it where they have a card kind of like they had with the Prestige before. Prestige it was just too good when it first came out and there was just, too much that people liked about it and were taking full advantage of it. 
So they just kind of like got rid of it for new applicants. People who still have it are still racking up a lot of points with it. Um, but um, yeah, I think that if you happen to have the city premier card, that would end up being a great card to use overseas. I, I wouldn't, I mean, when I go overseas, I don't shuffle through cards as much. I try to stick with like, just kind of mainly using one. Um, I don't know hundred percent. I think it's just because I'm trying to make sure my finances make sense as I'm overseas. Um, funny enough, just, you know, when I got back, I went to uh, the bank and had all this different foreign currencies. And I wonder how many people have ever tried to exchange it back. Do you usually do it at the airport? Because just for years, I've just been letting different foreign currencies just kind of stack up. A few dollars here, a few dollars there, and just not really thinking much of it. And then I was just like, you know what? Let me just grab this and take it to the bank and put it into my my bank account. And I didn't want, I didn't realize how long it was going to take. They had to do every single individual one. It took many minutes for each country I was going to that I, that I had currencies in. I ended up getting a few hundred bucks. I think it was somewhere near like $400 just in currencies from all these different countries that I've been to. Um, so that's nice. But I, I do wonder how much foreign currencies other people bring. Do you all bring uh, like a lot of foreign currency with you or do you just try to only have just like, um, um, I don't know, do you try to get some as you're there? Do you don't want to not have too much left over beforehand? Uh, so let's see, going down to the comments. So yeah, Filmo, which I can show this. This is kind of cool. So that was the whole point of me using this new thing. So yes, Filmo says, no set plan for my guest of honor prize yet, but excited about the possibilities. Yes, take advantage of that thing. You know, so when I was just at the Hyatt Regency over in uh, Sydney, Australia, I was there as a globalist for a week. And I had free breakfast for the entire week. And I forget how much it was, but I think it was somewhere like $44 or something right around there that I think it was going to cost. But that would be Australian dollars, so maybe somewhere like 30-ish US dollars. But that just saved me if I have to be going there each and every single morning. That just saved me uh, $200. Just saved myself $200 just from that one thing. If you're renting cars, you can get yourself right there. Um, I think you... Uh, does that have to be on award bookings? I'm trying to remember. I know that you end up getting free parking. I have to check to see if it is on an award booking, but you can end up saving yourself money there. In some places, the parking can end up being really expensive. The late checkout is super important to me. Um, the There was uh, the lounge access as well that I was able to take advantage of while I was in Sydney. So there was a lounge that um, I took, it. I would say, I don't know. I didn't do it every single day, but I used it quite a bit. And yeah, it ended up being like my dinner for many nights where I would just go to the lounge. There wasn't the greatest lounge when it came to like food options, but I will say that the drink options, even though it wasn't like a bartender or something like that there, um, there was a, uh, they had like different beers you could get in there. And I remember one of the nights I came back and went to like the, um, there's the sky bar that is at the hotel and the beers there were like, I think it was something like 15 Australian dollars. So each beer that I had down in the lounge was saving me that amount. Um, I didn't go crazy there, but I did pregame before some of the places that I went to. It was, uh, uh, what was the holiday? St. Paddy's Day while I was over there. So it was pretty packed with a lot of different people. There's a huge Irish community. I don't know if people realize this in Australia, like not just like Irish Australians, but like full, full on Irish accents. And there's just, I didn't realize how many, uh, Irish, I think there's like a really easy way for citizenship over there, but um, uh, Australia is a lot of fun. Anyone wants to go to a place where you have like, it's like London with LA weather, that's what you have for Australia. It's, it's really, really cool. Uh, let's see. I just got approved for the MX Schwab Platinum. That is awesome. Yeah. So if you ever do want to cash out your points, you have the ability at 1.1 cent, which at some point, sometimes people just rack up too many points and this can end up being a, a nice way to get some cash back. But um, good for you. I, I at one point was going to get that card before they did the new rules where you couldn't get the um, additional bonus. So uh, because of that, what is this? It says member. Oh, I have a member question over here. Hey, I got a new member. All right, MK. Cool. Now you are going to have the opportunity to win the, uh, the, the award for being a member. If you could also, MK, please um, join the Facebook group just so that when I announce the winner, I know exactly how to contact you because i don't know how to contact you via via um youtube but yes i'm going to one of the people who is a member thank you so much 
So now we have, you have a 50 50 chance of possibly <laughs> winning the award, um, which I think should be more worth more than the, the, the five dollars of being a member. But thank you so much for supporting the channel. Um, how about the green or MX green? So I think Chad is referring to the what's the best card to use overseas. Yeah, the the Amex Green. I think the reason why I wouldn't do that is because when overseas, there's a lot of places that don't accept Amex, like a, a decent amount. When I was in Fiji, most places weren't accepting Amex. Um, funny enough, in Fiji, if, if you took a taxi, they weren't even accepting cards at all. But um, I think I would want, if I was traveling overseas, to have one card that's going to be great for that. I would say go with a Mastercard or Visa card. Um, uh, and then uh, One Way Travel says the Wells Fargo Journey. Here's the thing about that card. If they add in better transfer partners, I think that card's a beast card. It really, I really, really do think it is. That card is uh, the fact you can get 5X back on hotels just booked directly with the hotel. It just you have to be able to have better transfer partners. But getting that is what, what other program does that? You have the American Source Platinum that gives you 5X back on flights. You have to have a $700 annual fee. I understand. Listen, I love the card and I understand there's all the different credits that can work with it. But you do have to have that $700 annual fee that most people are not going to be taking full advantage of. Um, if you're like us, fantastic. But if you're like the average person with a credit card, you're probably going to end up losing out on some of those, those credits, which is the reason why American Express gives them to you, because it's not a big deal for them. Um, but something like the journey car that's going to have a 95, I believe $95, $99 annual fee. Um, it also gives you a $50, is it hotel credit or airline, airline credit? And then has those high multipliers. The only thing, it just comes down to like, if you can just add in, give me Aeroplan as a transfer partner, give me Singapore Airlines, the transfer partner, give me Emirates, give me the ones that like everyone already has, Virgin Atlantic. If you end up getting these and they start doing transfer bonuses, we start seeing these things. It's going to end up being, oh, my goodness, I, I think that that has the ability to be a card that while people aren't going to be like, oh, I can rack up so many, um, I don't know what the Wells Fargo points are called, but so many Wells Fargo points um, just from getting all these, like, you know, how with the Chase Inc. cards, you can do something like that. But with that card, you're going to go, when I'm not working on a sign-up bonus um, or if I'm not trying to churn cards or whatever it is and I just want to do everyday spend, on average, I think that that card, the, whether it be just the either the Wells Fargo autograph journey or just a regular Wells Fargo autograph card, both of those end up being uh, good ones to have. So uh, let's see what MK say here. I'm going to Europe in May, staying at many heights. Okay, cool. Well, I am going to I'm going to be fair with the people who come in, but um, I'm going to like write down numbers on each person's thing, draw it, and then whoever ends up being the winner. Hopefully you are, you can end up being it because of uh, you having those options or having those those stays. That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm curious, which hotels are you staying at out there? I'm going to be staying at some in, in Europe as well. Should be pretty fun. Uh, okay, so now we're going back to some of these other ones, other questions. Uh, this is another question from Cesar. He asks, what do I think about the new Amex partnership with Point Me? So um, I think that it can be really helpful for a lot of people if they want to use the, the service. I think most people, when they are trying to do bookings, like the reason why I'm able to, if you've, anyone's watching me on Instagram or if you start to watch, I'm going to be having more videos about me traveling and how I'm able to do a lot of the business at first, is that if you can... Um, know you want to go to places, but then also be a little bit lenient on the days. Like if you start telling yourself, hey, I want to go this place on July 4th because it's going to be, well, then it's going to be a lot harder because, you know, that's the, it's the holiday, you know, everyone's going to want to go to New York or I don't know, where's everyone going on July 4th? Um, if maybe Dallas, wherever it is, everyone's going to have that holiday off. Everyone's going to be trying to travel certain places. But if you say to yourself, hey, I want to go there maybe July 15th, people aren't thinking about traveling on that specific day, then you might end up seeing more availability. So that's kind of one of the things about it. So um, point me, I had that service early on, maybe a couple of years ago. I, even, I had the paid version that I had with the service. The problem I have, with, I don't have it anymore. The problem I have with the service, and I think that they've fixed it a little bit, is the loading time for 
using the service was just way too long. It was just way, way, way too long. It would take at the time when I was using it, you could do one search and it could maybe take like two minutes. So if I say, hey, let me check this date and see what pops up, it takes two minutes. And then I want to check the next day. It takes another two minutes. That's way too long. I'd rather just go search the entire thing myself. I might do one time with the point me just to see what's kind of available, but I'm not doing it unless you had multiple windows, which I think that some people were doing. And I was trying to do that as well on one on my phone, one on, but it was just, it was going way too slow. So I switched over to Romy, um, which has been the one that I have been paying for. But now there's the, um, is it point? Yeah. That ends up being a really good one if you're trying to look for like specific days. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still like, I, I think that these services can end up being good. The good thing is that it's free. You end up getting with American Express. So um, I think that it can be really helpful for people. And I think that anyone who is nervous about making a booking, definitely use that service. It's 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 for free connected with American Express. So no reason why not to do it. Um, All righty. <clears throat> so this is from Dugras, who wrote in on the Facebook group. He wrote, uh, do you have a go-to domestic redemption? If so, what is it? So there isn't anything that I've been to domestically many, many times outside of Vegas. Um, Vegas is one that I've been to, and uh, there are a few different ways to take advantage of Vegas. For anyone who doesn't happen to have the My Vegas app on your phone, you can play games that you don't really play. You just kind of let your phone play the games and you can rack up points in that. And then when you end up using the My Vegas uh, app, after you end up racking up a certain amount of points, you can get comp nights. You can get yourself nights at the Bellagio, the MGM, the Excalibur. There's many different options on there. Um, so that can be a nice hack for ways if you want to get yourself really cheap nights in Vegas. Uh, I don't think that they ever let like weekend nights be available when it comes to using those cough nights. But if you want to connect it with like a, you know, a few days on the weekend. So if you happen to come in on maybe like a Wednesday, Thursday, and then have Friday, Saturday connected and you pay for the Friday, Saturday, because Vegas can be very expensive on the weekend. But um, if you can end up doing that, my Vegas app, and you end up finding those comp nights, they end up giving you two nights in a row. That can end up being a really good hack for, um, going over to Vegas, but that's been the consistent one. Um, when it comes to redemptions for like flights, I don't really use points very frequently for flights domestically. Um, that's not saying I don't use it at all. Like I flew to Boston a month ago for a wedding. I did it on American Airlines first class. I used points there, transferring over to British Airways and with the transfer bonus, so I was able to take advantage of that. Um, and then I've done that before with American Airlines, with British Airways numerous times. Um, that's probably going to be like the, the easiest one that I found consistent availability with. Um, but when I travel, a lot of times I go to new destinations. I like to see, even though like the only one that I've been kind of consistently going to has been, I've been to Japan a couple times already. And I'm going to be going to Germany um, again. My brother is now is stationed out there, so I'm going to go see him. And probably at least a couple times, maybe I'm like, well, I guess about like a year, but, um, but yeah, so I'm going to go see my brother over there. So, um, those have been only like the destinations that I've traveled to, I would say multiple times, but even still when traveling to those places, I've went to different spots in these destinations. So I haven't been like, oh, I'm going back to, like going back to Japan, but I was only really in Tokyo and I only visited like a place that I went to in Tokyo like one of the nights for only a little bit of time. The other times I was in Kyoto, Osaka, I was traveling and seeing other things that I hadn't seen before. Um, pretty much the same thing is going to happen when I go to Germany. Um, the only place that I guess I've visited multiple times in like the US, uh, other than like Vegas, I guess New York, um, but I don't really have too many hacks for that. But I will say that uh, I do like going to Texas. The food in Texas is, I mean, someone can argue with me here, but I believe it's the best food in America. It is just so good. Um, Terry Black's is a place that I know that uh, Spencer talks about. I've been there a few times. Really good. Um, there's another place in Dallas that I'm drawing a blank on the name, but um, uh, really good. So um, those are great places, and there's a lot of Hyatt hotels out there. So I guess um, that would be something that I could say would be a great uh, spot to use some of your chase points. 
Although there has been a lot of, I think, devaluation going on there with some of the different Hyatt hotels. I know that like the Tommy was, I think, only a category three when I went there. Was that last year? Maybe it's two years. I'm trying to, I'm losing track of the time right now. Um, well, I guess 2024. Yeah. So it was end of 2022. I went to the Tommy hotel and that was a lot of fun. Um, but now I think that's going up to almost like a category five now. So yeah, you know, the categories have been changing. Anything that's becoming super popular is, is going up. So it's just how it is. The more we talk about this stuff, you know, people are worried about like devaluations and things like that as we go in. But the one thing I'll keep on saying about that, anyone who feels with like the devaluation is that the ability to earn points for someone who isn't manufacturing spending is significantly higher now than it was if you go back, I don't know, five, six years ago. Like look at the gold card for the sign-up bonus five or six years ago. I think it was something like 30,000 points maybe. Now it's what? You can get 90,000. So, and then you look at something like the business gold card, I got 150,000 for that. Like there's so many points you can end up racking up now without needing to be crazy strategic with stuff like manufacturer spending and, 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 or whatever type of like business spend you have, you can just be someone who is a regular person, figure out a few little tricks without needing to go to stuff that could be like sketchy territory and be able to rack up a ton of points. So, um, yeah, hopefully that kind of answers your question, Dugras, but yeah, I don't, when it comes to domestic, I guess it's just, if you go to Vegas, check out the, my Vegas app can end up being a great one that you're just pretty much trading away your battery life for points to be able to get yourself um, comp nights over in Vegas. And before when Hyatt used to be connected and you had MGM gold, um, you got free nights because then you end up having resort fees waived. But now that that's gone, you have to pay at least I know, like 30 ish dollars for resort fees out there. Um, all righty. So actually, before I answer that next question, let me just scroll down to see if there's any more stuff. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. Me and Wong uh, Wei are playing a meetup after the 14th, after May 14th in Tokyo. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, Tokyo. Listen, Tokyo is so much fun. Um, I just love how good the food is for very little. I was just eating so much ramen, and it would cost like the equivalent of like, I don't know, eight-ish, maybe nine or ten dollars to here. I just had ramen when I got back from um, Australia, I was feeling a little sick and that's typically how it goes when I travel. And it was, and I got like the Uber where I got the 15% off and everything like that, or maybe it's 50% off. And it was still like $21, you know, this is with discount and everything like that. And it's just, I was like, man, if I actually paid for the delivery and everything that people sometimes do with this, it would have been like 35-ish bucks. So now I think just normally, if I wanted to get it, it would have been somewhere near like $24, but with the discounts and all the different things I had going and end up dropping down near like including with tips somewhere near like a little over 20 bucks but um yeah the good food the safety everything having a trip going out to if you all plan to go over to um Tokyo that's fantastic I wish you all tons of fun let's see so I'll, I'll, oh this is from MK I will be staying at the Park Hyatt Vienna oh awesome on Das Prague nice and the Hyatt Regency in uh Black First, I haven't, I don't know. Oh, in London. Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with that one. I, I stayed at the Ondas out in London when I was out there. Uh, it's my first major redemption trip. Good for you, MK. Good for you. That's, that's really, really cool. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Darius Jamal, great content pro. Recently came across the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I'm trying to hopefully keep on giving out good content, wh whether it be information, about how to do bookings, um, the ones about cards, which I know some people don't like when we talk about those, you know, like cards or different things that people already who are deeper in the game know more about. You don't have to even be super deep, but just a little bit deeper into it. But the reality is, is that those are the ones that a lot of people end up watching. Um, you can give, I can give out videos about how to do bookings or I can make the videos about my travels, which I enjoy doing and I, I like the way that they come out being. But when you talk about the American Express Platinum card, and that's just what a lot of people like to see. So um, you have to do, it's kind of like what I think Denzel said, one for them, one for you, one for them, one for you. So I try to do videos where I think that the things that I really like, I'm passionate about, and I want to be good work that's going to really help people. And then also things that I think that maybe people want to see as well. So 
it's a mixture of that. Um, but hopefully, yeah, I'm going to be having some, hopefully still good content and even better content coming moving forward. That's really what I'm working hard on right now. Um, so let's see. I keep getting denied for credit cards because too many recent accounts. Any way around that? Uh, how many recent accounts do you have? If you start looking at business accounts, if you start going to American Express, unless you're in pop-up jail, I can't remember if you told me if you were, if you weren't. Um, yeah, because American Express doesn't seem to care as much. Like I have a lot of new accounts, but mainly with me, I've I've uh, I've just been getting so many more business cards lately. Like I have, I'm gonna have a video coming out about the newest card I've got, which is the Hawaiian Airlines business card. I was thinking, okay, well, a few ways I could use these points. I can fly over to Hawaii in business class on their newest. Um, what I got the new Boeing. Uh, what is it? 77 that they just released and they got the new business class there. Um, but yeah, I would say look at business cards. Look at business cards. If you've got a lot of new accounts, obviously you're going to have to move away from Chase. You're probably going to have issues with um, with City, with Capital One, but well, also with Barclays. Uh, American Express, check out if you happen to have a, a Bank of America account, check out getting Bank of America cards. The Alaskan Airlines cards are great. This trip that I just did, I'm gonna have a video for it, but I flew from, I mean, it's changed now because Alaska just devalued their program, but I flew from LA over to Fiji, stayed in Fiji for, for five days, and then flew from Fiji over to Australia. And that entire thing right there was only 55,000 Alaskan Airlines miles. I think now it's 85,000, so it has changed or it's somewhere near there, but it's went up significantly. But being able to have extended amount of time that I wanted in Fiji was the reason why I was like, wow, this is awesome because that free stop where we end up getting with um, with Alaskan Airlines. So I would say check out if you haven't have a Bank of America account, check out uh, getting yourself some Alaskan Airlines miles. They now are also a transfer partner of Built. Um, I still would prefer American Airlines miles. I believe American Airlines miles are the strongest miles in the game. Um, but the only thing about American Airlines miles is that they're the only ones that haven't done a major devaluation in like the last, I'm going to say four or five years. And Alaska's done like maybe two or three. Um, United just did a big one last year. Um, it doesn't matter about Delta. Delta's already <laughs> just the way that they are. But there's been Turkish. Every program has been doing it. And American Airlines already has a lot of great deals. Hasn't changed. So the thing that I'm a little bit fearful of, and I've already just been like using up my American Airlines miles, is uh, I've just been like, oh, they're going to devalue this program. They are. It's just, it's 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 significantly better than other ones at the moment. Granted, it is harder to get them, but uh, I just see that it's they they all try to devalue themselves and they want to be competitive. At least they try to be competitive with other programs because if they're not, then unless people are just constantly using them, there's not going to be a reason for people to even um, use their program. But yeah, check out Bank of America. Barclays is sensitive with inquiries usually, but I got approved for the American Airlines Barclays card when I did have a, a lot of new accounts. Um, I applied for that card at least twice, maybe even three times. Um, so you just got to keep on trying. Like, I mean, you see someone like, uh, even though you say you have a lot of new accounts, I bet you don't have more than Sledge. And Sledge is still getting new cards. So Follow whatever he's doing because he knows how to get new cards all the time. I mainly just try to stick around with the business cards because that allows me to just keep on getting approved because then add new lines, doesn't add new accounts to your personal credit report. But that's something that if unless you think you're getting more than Sledge, then you have the, you have the ability to get more more cards. Um, Todd, what's going on? Hey JP, your recent Tokyo trip looks so cool. Would you recommend Tokyo this year, this time of year when most Americans are on spring break? Yes, yes. The first time I went to Tokyo, uh, well, yeah, heck. So I went in, I went two times so far, and I went in January, and then I also went in May. In January, although it was like chilly, or I guess it was cold, you wouldn't need a jacket, it still was so much fun. If you haven't been to Tokyo before, um, it's just it's my favorite city to go visit. Uh, like I'm currently planning out this like really cool end of the year trip for hopefully this just dope year that I'm going to be having with travel. And part of it, I will be stopping in Tokyo, not for very long, but I will be stopping over there again, just because of how much I love that country. Um, 
or that country, that city, but also the country of Japan. It's just, uh, yes, I would say if you have the ability to, um, I mean, the, the, so if you now, if you're talking about with award availability, it's probably going to be, uh, pretty limited if you're just trying to hop over there, unless you, you're just, if you're okay with the economy, like the one thing that people may not realize, like, obviously we all want to have the beds on planes and the business and first class. That's great. But there's almost always economy flights. So there's someone who I'm helping make a booking who happens to be going to Melbourne, Australia. And that person who I'm helping out, um, I was, they were like, I just want to make sure I can get over there. And I'm like, listen, we're going to look for business and first, but if you're worried about just economy flights, there's almost always an option for economy. It's not great or sorry, it's not insane cents per point if that's what you're looking for, but you are going to be able to get yourself, uh, you are going to be able to get yourself to the destination. So if you're taught, I don't know how old you are, or how big you are, but if you're someone who can be able to easily sit in the seat from, if you come from Los Angeles, it's like 12 hours, not easily, but at least you're not going to be like, my goodness, my hips are hurting. My back is hurting. You're not, uh, you know, Spencer Johnson, who's six, nine, if, if you're not in that situation, then, then sure. Uh, I think that you can still, if you happen to not have tons of points, get over that economy. But if you are going to be looking for like a business in first class, it's gonna have to be like a last minute thing for you to be able to find availability for it. But yes, I highly recommend visiting Tokyo. If you haven't, it's my favorite city in the world as of right now. I mean, there's more I'm going to be going to visit, but I just, if I could speak Japanese, I would live there. That's how much I love that. But it, it's, there definitely is a, a decent language barrier when you visit. Um, let's see here. Uh, your style on the Park on Kyoto video was well done. No talking, just music. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to balance with that because there's some videos I watch where people will speak through it and they'll talk or they'll do voiceovers. And then there's other ones where you don't even see the person's face. They're just showing you as they're traveling, whether it be in business or first class or as they're in a hotel. And I find both of them really good. I actually, a lot of the times, like watching the ones where they're not even talking. So, but then there's also other times where I want to know information. So I, I don't know which one's better. And I also think that if you want people to come back to your videos, it may make sense to put your face in it because then they go, hey, this is someone who I like. So um, yeah, but thanks. I'm glad. Yeah, it took me a minute to find the right music too. But uh, thank you for that. I, it was quite a bit of work. Um, it didn't get a ton of views, but that's one that it's like, hey, if I want to show some of my work. I love the way that, that video turned out. Um, what other places have you been to that have relatively cheap local food like Tokyo? Uh, do, 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 do. The food in Korea, if you're getting like Korean barbecue, was not expensive. Um, oh, Turkey. Turkey. Sorry. That's going to be. If you go to Istanbul, Turkey, the food there is so cheap. You can go through a day of getting like really good food for like 15 bucks, the day of food. I mean, and now what they've had, unfortunately, massive like hyperinflation going on over there, the US dollar is probably worth even more. So if, yeah, if you want your great bang for buck, a really modern city that's, at least I felt incredibly safe there, that um, is gonna have really cheap food that is fantastic, I highly recommend going to Istanbul, Turkey. Yes, definitely that. Um, let's see. All right. So one way travel says, perhaps, let's see. Kamilani. Hey, JP. What's going on, Kamilani? I could never eat too much ramen. Japanese, yeah. Yeah, ramen. I just, I love it. I love, I love ramen. It's so good. I don't know why I'm so addicted to it, but man, it's so good. Um, let's see. Uh, Poppy. Hey, yo, you're also Poppy or sorry, po, what, how you say that? Poji. Poji uh, 79. Staying in Hollywood and a couple of months, oh, in a couple of months. Hi, Tommy. Good enough or splurge and go with the Thompson. Ah, uh, I don't know. I think that one of those is going down in category i think in the next few days so you might even be getting some points out i gotta check to see which one that is um oh thank you Philmo, for being a member i'm just now seeing it sorry i got it. the way that this program works it's I'm kind of scrolling down and i'm figuring this whole thing out but thank you appreciate you Philmo, for becoming a member um and also thank you uh poji who's also a member i seen you're the first one so thank you very much for that um so 
I've said that the Thompson hotels that I stayed at have been, when it comes to like value, but also like luxury. I stayed at the one that was in, I feel like I'm missing out on some other. I stayed at a few. I stayed at the one that was in um, um, Madrid. That hotel was awesome. And now it's up to like a category six, I believe. But when I got it at the time, it was only category four. I stayed at the one in uh, Mexico. That was great. My And then I, when I was in um, Austin, there was a Tommy and a Thompson hotel. The hotel was awesome, but they were connected. So you just had the same hallway where you had like, a, you would get out of the elevator that up to the right would be the Tommy hotels. The left would be the Thompson hotels. So I was like, I'm just going to get the Tommy because it's the same hotel, but the other ones has slightly nicer rooms. Um, but the, the, the location was identical. Everyone had the same pool. You have the same bar. You have the same everything. So I was like, I'm not going to same gym. Um, I have to look at the two. I, that I, I haven't, I haven't, that I don't know. Um, I do know that the I've, I've visited the Andas. I know people who stay at the Andas over there, but that's a category six, I believe. That's like right on like, I believe Hollywood Boulevard. Um, if you ever want to go to the comedy store, it's like right near there. So that'd be really cool. Um, so yeah, I wish I could give you better information. I, I haven't really looked, I should more, but since I live in Los Angeles, I don't really look as much at the hotels that are out here because I'm just, I just go home. So, <laughs> but um, I think either one, Tommy is very usually pretty similar. It's just like a little bit of a step down from the Thompson Hotel. So <coughs> depending on for the reason you're coming out here, if you happen to be coming out here for um, a birthday, a anniversary, whatever type of cool event, you're just trying to step up the game, do it. But if you're just coming out here for your first time visiting L.A., you're trying to save some points, you're trying to go to the beach, go to many other different places, then maybe the Tommy could end up being just fine. Uh, Filmo became a new member. Thank you so much. Uh, for some reason, I thought I was already, or you, or you thought you already a member? Yes. Thank you so much, Filmo, for being a member. For anyone who wants to become a member, please join the cheap or the is it cheap travel knowledge team on um, the YouTube page. As I said, I'm giving. There's going to be a giveaway. I'm going to be giving away for this giveaway, and I will be doing giveaways throughout. Pretty much like every month is what I'm hoping to try to do. Um, Filmo was actually one who won the first giveaway, and I'm going to be giving with this giveaway. It's going to be a um, guest of honor booking. So if you want to have the opportunity to do that, please um, become a member, help support the channel. I'll be very thankful for that. Let's see. Uh, JP, you're trying to fly the A350? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's funny. I, I saw I saw availability for it, and I wish I kind of booked it. Uh, um when I first originally saw it, because I remember there was like speculations of when it was going to be available. And then now that I want to do this end of the year trip, that's kind of like where I could, I could have booked it. Now it's kind of hard. And I don't, the times that it is available, is just going to be a pain in the butt to try to find the availability. I'm not saying it's impossible, but um, for those who want to know how to book that, I would say the best way to find it would end up being that if you have Asia miles, Asia Miles, although it's going to be more expensive than something like American Airlines Miles, the reason why Asia Miles is is great for it is because Asia Miles can look further ahead in time than most other programs. I believe it's 360 days they can end up looking ahead. So what happens is that if you have American Airlines Miles, which I believe is 332 days or something right around there, um, although it has the best deals, what ends up happening is that all of the stuff's going to get booked up from people who happen to have other One World Partner points and then they end up booking it up or just with japan airlines miles and they end up booking it up and then the availability is pretty much gone by the time it ends up going to american airlines so american airlines and also alaskan both have decent well, alaskan depending on where you're at uh, if you're looking for this then it's not as good of a deal i think it's like 105 000 points but um but american airlines has a great um opportunity and sweet spot there but the challenge ends up being that you just have to hope that the availability is there when you end up getting to um, uh, to the time when availability is available for American Airlines miles. So if you want to be able to book it, anyone who wants to try to book something Japan Airlines first class, look as far ahead as you can with Asia miles. That's going to be the best way to find it. You're going to look at it and it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be a decent amount more miles. I forget exactly how much it is. I think it's like 135 um, 
don't quote me on that, but I think it's somewhere near that realm. Um, and then the uh, and then the taxes and fees are going to be a few hundred dollars as well. So you're going to be able to go, why would I want to do that as compared to 80000 with American Airlines? Because you have a guarantee of being able to get it with the H miles. So yes, you are going to be paying a premium, but you're paying a premium for a guarantee to be able to have it as compared to you're sitting around hoping that you have the opportunity with your American Airlines miles. And that's funny enough, I, as I'm saying that I booked a first class with American Airlines miles for Japan Airlines later on this year, not for the new one, not for the A350, uh, uh, but, uh, but I just happened to find availability flying out of LAX. But that would be cool. It looks like it, it'd be an awesome experience. Um, you'd have to fly to New York as well or fly into New York. Um, but uh, I don't know when, I'll, when I'm going to book it. Maybe sometime, sometime in 2025. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So we got one more here. Uh, the two hundred dollar Hilton Spire Resort credit. Question for the group: Can I just eat at the restaurant at one of the Vegas resorts list without staying? Uh, duh, 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 duh. I believe so. So if you want to know if you can just, yeah, you should be able to with the resort credit. Um. I think the resort credit, because if it works the same way like the previous resort credit works, I don't have that that card, but I know how the previous resort credit worked is that you could go to somewhere that had the resort and be able to just use that was listed as a resort with Hilton and be able to use the card and take advantage of it. Um, so if you happen to be going to one of these places, then it should trigger it. Um, I would try to look for data points to confirm but I believe as long as you are at something that is counted as a resort, then you should be able to get the resort credit to work. That's how it used to work. I know that for the the way that the it was hit, set up before, that's how it was. So I'm just assuming it's still working that way. But um, I would check on check a check like flyer talk just to confirm that what I'm saying isn't isn't inaccurate. Uh, or if anyone else happens to know who has, I have Hilton cards, but I haven't used, I haven't used that credit since the, with the new Hilton Aspire. Uh, let's see. So the next question is also another Hilton question. This came from, I forget, it might've been the, I don't know if it was a Facebook group or the YouTube one, but if I have Hilton surpass that has a $95 annual fee every February and I upgrade that card to a Hilton Aspire, Annual fee five hundred fifty dollars in August. When will the Hilton Aspire annual fee post? Also, since the oh sorry, this thing's broken up into two because it was too long. Also, since the Hilton Aspire comes with a free night certificate, when will I get the free night certificate? Annually every August or annually every February? Thanks. So with the free night certificate, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get it. It's gonna be connected with your new Hilton. Uh, when you end up getting the Hilton Aspire card? That's that's a really good question. That one, I uh, I believe you end up getting it when you end up getting the Hilton Aspire card. So it's gonna end up triggering from there. And then when it comes down to the annual fee, that's gonna be prorated. So that, um, um it's gonna be, so you pay the $95, you're gonna have a prorated difference depending on the amount of months in between. So I don't know the exact number mathematically of what's gonna end up being, but it's gonna end up prorating the different months that it ended up costing for the $550 throughout the rest of the year, excluding what you ended up having to pay for the, um, and then you end up getting the prorated back for your uh, your surpass card. So that just ends up being a prorated math that the computer algorithm will figure out. I don't know exactly what it is, um, but when it comes to the up or upgrading for your Hilton Aspire card, you don't get it, you don't get it right away. So I know that some people who, um, who've had it have told me that like it takes a little bit of time before it just posts right into your account. So don't, don't, if you, if you're like, oh my goodness, I need it for a stay in August and you end up upgrading the card in August, don't imagine that right when you get the, the card, you're just gonna, it's just gonna pop in your account immediately. Um, a lot of these things, it takes a little bit of time for it even like post. I know it's kind of similar with like the, let's say for instance, like the Hyatt card, if you end up getting the Hyatt card, you get those five elite nights, but I've heard from many people, and I don't remember exactly what it was from when I originally got it, but it doesn't post like right away in your account. It may take a little bit of time, and then eventually it does post in your account. So, um, but uh, you will be able to get that. And what I would recommend doing if you have the ability to, 
is earn yourself a free night award certificate with your surpass card, spending the $15,000. And then after you're done with that, then upgrade the card and get yourself another free night award certificate. Um, so that would end up being a way to, to get two, but also make sure that you've had the card for at least a year um, because then they won't even let you even upgrade the card because it's a law with that Congress set up. So um, da, 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 let's see. Alrighty, see if I have any more questions here that were set up from the group. Um, no, all right, so that's the main things. Let me check here in my notes to see if I had anything else in here. Thank you so much for everyone who became a member. It says I got stars, what's star? Oh yeah, for the, so yeah, I got, now I currently have three members, that is awesome. Thank you everyone who became a member of the Cheap Travel Knowledge community. Um, if you all have questions, um, who are the members and people who did become members, please join the Facebook group. Um, if you haven't had questions, but also just so that when I announce the winner, I can communicate as I did with Filmo before. I just need to get information to be able to send you the stuff that you've won. And I feel like it would just way more of a mess on on um, YouTube than it would be as compared to something like like Facebook. Uh, messages about, yeah. So I think I have everything that I wanted here. If anyone has any further questions, please let me know down in the comments. If not, I am going to be gone, but I will be doing more of these. Um, I do thank everyone so much for being a part of this. I'm going to try to get better at navigating this entire program here. Um, this thing is new. I'm trying to get upgrade my, um, I guess, everything. I'm trying to upgrade everything, trying to make everything look better, trying to make the content better, trying to become a better content creator. So that's that's the goal for 2024. But if no one has any further questions, um that's the end and i will be having another live stream coming out probably right before the end of the month just so i can see if anyone else wants to become a member before choosing the final uh person who can um win the uh certificate but hopefully everyone enjoyed this any final questions if you do drop them in if not okay thank you so much <laughs> i guess i did that i don't know how i did that i got all these uh fireworks come behind me. Cool. Thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, if you could maybe hit the like button, that'd be great. And then join the Cheap Travel Knowledge uh, Facebook group if you have any questions you want to ask. or if you, I love when people put down their wins in there. That is awesome. So please do something like that as well. But I'll catch you all later. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night.